without the mic. If anybody can't hear me, let me know and I'll turn it on. But uh, I think we'll try it without. Uh, with luck and my memory, which isn't the greatest, this is the last time I'm going to say B24. Not again. That's a promise. That's a promise. That's a promise. Uh, nobody believes me. I don't understand that. At any rate, I was privileged to go with Minnesota Air National Guard on a civilian tour, civic leaders tour down to Panama and Guatemala in 1995. And I'm here today to talk about the Panama Canal giveaway. Now, it occurred a lot later than that date. It actually started earlier than that date. President Carter, if you'll remember, wrote a treaty with the then president of Panama in 1977. Brought that back, and it took two years before Congress accepted it, so that in 1979, actually, that treaty was enforced. And uh, within it, they had uh, statements in there that for 20 years there would be operation continued with both countries being responsible. Five-year intervals, the United States manning the uh, canal for five years with Panamanians looking over our shoulder, then reversing that with we looking over the Panamanian shoulder, and again the second set of five years each. So that December 31st, 1999, the Panama Canal actually went over to Panama for its continued operation. Uh, it wasn't very long after that, however, though, that uh, they began looking around for who else might be interested in it. And there were proposals sent by several governments, including the United States, for a continued presence at, in Panama to operate that canal. But uh, they accepted a proposal from Red China instead. And uh, if you don't think that we are headed for difficult times because of that, I think you're all mistaken. I really mean that what happened in the last, I'm not going to get terribly political here, uh, but I will tell you that the last months of President Clinton's era in the White House, along with his uh, orders and his pardons have set this country up to have some rough times in the future. There's no two ways about it. And uh, enough said on that. I won't make it any more political than that, except that I hope everybody will start to read and listen to what's going on around the world. Included in the things that he did was to give away technical secrets to China on our missile, our, our uh, smart bombs, the bombs that could go to, through a particular window in a particular building and so forth, uh, along with a lot of other technical data that was given to Red China, and in turn they paid that back by giving him $300,000 in his coffers for his last elections run prior to uh, his last terms and last years in office. Uh, I, I'm going to get back now to talking strictly about the Panama Canal, because it's probably listed somewhere as the eighth wonder of the world. And in fact, I would say after having seen it, I would agree. It, it's a miraculous piece of engineering. You're talking about engineers here. I hope those of you that are, were in that profession have had the opportunity to see it. I would like a show of hands of how many people have gone through the Panama Canal. Okay, a goodly number has been through the Panama Canal. And I'm sure you'll agree with me when you think of the magnitude of that operation and the manner in which it was carried out and, in fact, the dates that it was carried out in. Construction was started in 1914 by the United States. We took over from France, who had tried to do it before us. France had done the Suez Canal and decided that they should do the one in Panama. And uh, they began to collect private funds for it. There was some suspicion of collusion of money. Uh, much of the money that was collected was confiscated and sent elsewhere. But it was more than that that stopped France from proceeding on it. They did begin the work, had a lot of machinery and equipment over there. 
we were over there building a railroad at that time to handle uh, gold that was being shipped across that isthmus of Panama from one port to the other, going back to Spain, actually. Gold had been found in Peru and other places like that, and in order to get it back to Spain without too much interference and too long a time on, on ships, they decided to cross that isthmus of Panama would save them great time. Uh, way back in early, early times, a uh, cobblestone path was actually created and they used mules to haul and transport produce, gold, and other things like that, commodities, across that isthmus, about a 50-mile venture across the peak of that isthmus. Uh, the canal uh, company that started it in France fell out of favor, they started the project and walked away from it. Our government stepped in and paid them $80,000 for the rights to continue it and for the equipment that they had on site at the time. And beginning in 1914, took on the job of, of building that canal. And had it not been for the doctors that were there, we would not have been able to complete the canal either. Uh, all of the diseases that you associate with uh, work in the, the uh, rainforest climates and so forth prevailed down there. And it was only because they learned how to kill mosquitoes and uh, to treat other jungle rot and other things that uh, were affecting the manpower that they had there. At the peak of the time we worked there, there were 75,000 people working on that canal, individuals. Uh, they brought in heavy equipment. The, the railroad, which we had started before that, ultimately proved to be a real boon because with that, they were able to haul excavated material from the canal itself up into the hills and create a dam on a man-made lake then that was created at the top of the hill at about a 407 foot elevation. Uh, there were two man-made lakes there, very, very large lakes. The uh, workings of the canal, actually, um, the canal itself, the length of it is 50 miles. There's uh, three sets of locks on each end, double sets of locks, I should say, six locks total, three going up, three going down on each end. Uh, they are a thousand feet in length, 108 feet in width, and uh, there's a mile and a half of concrete leading into some of those, at least several hundred feet of concrete on either side leading the ships into the, to the canal proper. Uh, the ships from both ends are first raised, elevated in three lifts, 85 feet above Pacific Ocean or, or Atlantic Ocean elevation. And then on the other end, they're lowered again to the, to the other side. And that uh, occurs both ways uh, on each end.